What's up y'all, Bradford here from Worship Tutorials. Thanks for checking out this tutorial on good plans from Red Rocks Worship. Try to say that five times fast. I think about that, hard. Red Rocks Worship. Maybe it's not as hard. Anyways, <laughs> this is a great song. It's objectively a great song, but I have a hard time feeling like worship should, a, a time of corporate worship should involve singing songs about us, me, I, as individuals. Um, unless I will praise you or something to that extent. Uh, we're not we're not worthy human beings of being praised and, and sung about on a Sunday morning when we're there for an hour and change. I don't think it's worth the time to do that, all right? However, uh, this song kind of does it in a slightly different way that I actually do appreciate. And uh, you're not here for that, but uh, I appreciate the fact that we're not just talking about the fact that God's going to do good things for me. Um, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that either, and, and it's in and of itself. However, this idea that God's going to do good things it needs to be paired with the fact and understood that those things are only going to happen when they bring God glory. It doesn't matter what it looks like if it does not bring God glory. And so the idea of getting things, physical, material things, it's not what God's after. Sure, you may get those things, but it's, it doesn't mean that that's what's important. And so I feel that it's very important to understand that in the valley, in the desert, in the dry seasons, in the hard times, that we remember that good things, God's plans, things that will bring him glory can and still will happen. So um, that's not why you're here. I think I've said that twice already. It's the third time. But we're going to dive into the song. <laughs> and... Um, I'm going to teach you how to play it. If you've ever watched any of our tutorials before, uh, I especially am harping on, and I especially am very passionate about the fact that you do not merely play the notes just because they sound correct or they are correct, because that is going to be very difficult. Um, case in point, use case right now. I am playing the song in the key it's originally in, it's the key of D, and I'm about to go and do some student camps as to when this will be released in correlation to that, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to do it in either A or B flat. Our worship leader wants to kind of feel it out in the moment and he knows that his band can do that. Totally fine, um, I'm fine with that. This would be not much fun to spend all this time. I spent a lot of time learning the song, did the playthrough, and I'm sitting here teaching you. And I know some of you are screaming, saying just get on with it. That's why there's timestamps. But I'm trying to teach you how to fish, not merely just give you the fish. So pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm gonna to try to address and point to certain techniques that I'm utilizing so you can learn, first off, just how to play guitar better, um, how you can break down the fretboard, um, how you can learn how to play new parts that you wanna create on your own, just give you techniques like that. But also because if you follow what I'm doing, it's really easy to move the parts like I will be doing when I have to play this, not in D, but A or maybe B flat. Um, also, if I'm going to play it in B-flat, you best believe I'm going to use like my drop tune Digitech drop pedal <laughs> because I want to have the girth of A, right? But I don't want a capo to do it. So um, anyways, we'll figure that part out. That's not the point. So we start with the first verse and the chorus kind of really just playing the one and the three of the chords that we're following along. Um, one and three is is really easy. If you were to play the chords as bar chords, you would really just be plucking the D and the G string to get that. So the intro uh, in the first verse and chorus are like this, here's a B minor. A, G, to the D. But like, that's what you're playing. I'm just plucking the D and the G, D and the G string. So you, I, how I do it, and just how it makes sense to me, We're gonna slide in from the seventh fret to the ninth fret on the D string. Do that every once in a while. That's all you really need to know here. Uh, so to break it down, again, D and the G string. We're on, cause it's minor, we're gonna separate. A minor chord is half a step down on the three, half a step down from what you're playing. So if we did here, that's a B major. We have a B here and a D sharp here but a B minor is a B and a D, so half a step down. You could just memorize this idea. Your minor chords are shaped like this. Your major chords are shaped like this. Like if you remember how to play this bar chord, this minor chord. 
So, on the D and the G, we're on 9 and 7, 7 and 6, 5 and 4, all the way up here to 12 and 11. Okay? Then we hit to the chorus. That's first verse. When we get to the chorus, we're going to do kind of like a skip back and forth kind of thing. So D, B minor, A, back up to the D, to the G. Do that slide in the B minor. D. Okay, so when we drop into the next part of the song, verse and chorus actually, verse two and chorus, we're gonna need to utilize the D shape. If you haven't heard me say this before, just start thinking this way. Like the D shape is used often to give you lines. Example, uh, the song is in the key of C, but from the inside out, we're using a D shape. So here's a C down here, way down here. If we're gonna play a C chord. We're only picking the E, B, and the G string. Ah. It's actually really hard to single that string out like that. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna use the D shape because we're in the key of D, and we're gonna do, kind of start this, it's got this real cool tension, I like it. It almost kind of sounds like from the inside out, but you don't have to, fret the D shape completely. Um, I do just cause it's just more muscle memory. Um, but we're gonna do it up here. We're playing a D, but 12 frets above. So the 14th fret. But we're gonna hit this on the 14th fret of the G, hammer on to the 16th fret. And get the 14th fret of the E. So if you're doing the shape, like that. So we're kind of just like walk it down in a way where it's like keep some notes similar. You'll hear it. I just, instead of doing the full shape, I just use my first finger completely across the 14th fret, and you'll see why in a second. 14 on the G, hammer onto the 16. Stroke the 14th fret on the E. And then we're gonna play the 14th fret on the B and the E. And then we're gonna do this, which is 15th on the B, 12th on the E. So, for reference, we're gonna kind of like do this D shape and hammer on, and, but we're gonna hit the D note. That is a D, when you play a D chord. That on the third fret on the B string, that is a D. Learning your notes on the strings, I brought this up in other videos too, it's very helpful because you're, you're not gasping. You wouldn't be playing a C in the key of D. So it's helpful because you also know you're gonna play a D sharp. That's helpful. So knowing these things provides perspective and helps you kind of realize, well, if it's gonna be a note in the key of D, I know I have to Like you know where it is or isn't going to be, even if you can't remember exactly what to play. So we're gonna go and hit this D note on the 15th fret of the B string. Do it again. And then you'll hear they start digging in um, it's, it sounds like a telly in the middle position to me. And then they switch to the bridge and start digging in. And we go to the chorus. The chorus, I don't know what it is about a part like this. It's just, it just works so well, brings so much energy. It's so simple. I just love this style of thing a ton. I, I do, it's kind of my go-to when I feel like a, I'm trying to uh, pick out parts for a song. Like if I'm filling in and there's no parts. I don't know why, but this just resonates with me. <laughs> So if you just use your first two fingers, put your first finger on the 14th fret of the G, second finger on the 15th fret of the B, and then we're gonna hammer up to the 17th fret of the B in a second. We're gonna go back and forth. A lot of that. And kind of like push into playing the riff again. And we're playing the 16th fret on the G, so. Do that twice, and then we're gonna kind of like just play a whole D shape. And we're gonna like hammer on and get that A note. Like that. Okay, then we're gonna get into 
you know, of course, play it whenever the chorus comes around. Then we're going to get into like these hits and stuff. I'm going to be honest, I couldn't tell you exactly uh, if there's a droning D string, but it's not going to hurt. It's going to keep it bigger. You might as well do it. So we're going to start with actually a D note on the G string, which is going to be on the seventh fret. It's like this skipping back and forth. So what you need to know for the G, we're kind of like walking. So it's a one, two, three, four, and down and a seven as well. Seven, one, two, three, four. And by that, I mean the scale degree, the notes in the scale. So those frets though, are gonna be six, seven, nine, 11, 12. do that a few times. When you start singing the bridge, you're going to continue going up though from 12. So when you start doing that, you're going to start the first part the same. Instead of going right to the 12th fret, you're going to go up to the 14th and kind of like bring it back down. That kind of thing. Then we're going to do that twice. If you start counting, you realize that he's happening in twos once the bridge starts. Then we're going to hop an octave. Uh, you could, if you really want to. No, not really, actually, you're gonna run out of frets. I just do it up here. I'm using an octave during this whole thing anyways. It kind of sounds like that's what's going on. And maybe there's not a droning D string. I don't know, but I really like it, so I'm gonna do it. But then when you start going, I got fat fingers. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna start with the 15th fret on the B and then drop to the 14th fret. 17 to 15, 19 to 17, all the way 19, 20, 21, 20, 22, to the 20. There's that right there. Then we're going right back into the chorus. There is a part where we have like this cool triplet feel going on, these hits, and you're really just following the melody of the chorus. Uh, and you'll hear it's kind of, it's building up and there's like, it's not super syncopated. And by that, I mean like, it's not like super tight. The whole band isn't doing it. They're not choking the, in between the notes and like palm muting and keeping stuff really, really tight. It's just kind of like this like emphasis more than it's hits. But you best believe if I'm playing this with my boy, Chris Crowder at Hope Community Church, he, I'm gonna look behind him and he's gonna know I want him to, he knows I love hits. So we mess around with each other in rehearsal in a good way and play stuff that make the other one likes and see if the other one catches it. Anyways, this is what you need to know. B string uh, is how I'm doing it. It just fits a little bit better. 15, 17, 19. Like that. You're on the D going up to E, then going up to F sharp. Uh, you could do it down here. Or you could do octaves. But that's hard to do that. So like, that's why I keep it right here. Um, it's not like this full force thing, like I said. So there you go. Then we end on a G, the four. Ending on a four is always glorious. One of my favorite things though is to play. And here's a voicing for you, which it's either, G, it's a G major seven. Uh, let's see. Maybe not G major set. I don't know, but I basically play it's, it's a it's a very much a very much a James Taylor chord. D shape with like a basically with the G in the bass. So it reminds me of Show Me Your Glory.
I like it. Um, it's been a very, very long day, so you're gonna have to forgive me for not thinking of what that exact. I'm shooting this. You may be watching this at six in the morning, but I'm shooting at 9.30 at night. <laughs> um, I very much like this voicing. And it, it ends on a four anyways. There's also a really cool version where they do doxology you should check out. Um, but that's it. We have patches for this. Uh, our only current units that we support for song patches is Helix and then Fractal stuff, Axe 3, FM9, FM3. Unfortunately, that's it for right now. We appreciate your interest in other modelers, but who knows? But <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Hey, this was free. Um, we love, there's other companies that exist that do a subscription so that you can pay to learn this stuff too. Love what they're doing. They're gonna be way more accurate. Uh, I still, I try to be as accurate as possible, but I all, because that's what you're paying for. They're trying to offer you the song exactly as, as it is because that's what you're expecting. We approach these things as if you're the only guitarist, here's what you need to know. We combine parts uh, or sometimes take some liberties to make things feel a little bit better. And, you know, it's free though. Um, I feel as though we're still offering high quality content, even though sometimes we take liberties. Uh, most people who watch our stuff aren't subscribed. That's a fact for all YouTubers. We can see that statistic. We can see for the views, you know, it's like 70 plus percent for almost anybody who does a YouTube channel semi-regularly. They're not subscribed. Uh, if you just watch to the end of this, especially, it means you must have been wanting to hear how to play the song completely. So, and learn how to play it. So please just subscribe. You know, if you learned something, just sharing it and telling people, hey, this tutorial was great. That's helpful. We appreciate it. You can buy patches. Even if you don't have a unit or you don't care to have patches, you know, that's a way to support us. I don't know. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, we always get this comment also, and I didn't say this at the beginning. Uh, there's always a playthrough. If there's a tutorial, there's a playthrough. If there's a playthrough, it doesn't always mean there's a tutorial. But if there's a tutorial, there's a playthrough. That's linked below also. You can watch how I play all this in context. This is just to teach you the parts. But thank you so much for joining. Make sure you subscribe. I said that. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time.